I got the opportunity to upgrade my fish room, turning it into my ultimate setup and Aquashilla is the reason I can make this video today. Let me explain, but first, let me tell you what Aquashilla is. Aquashilla is the largest aquarium festival in the United States and it's a great place to meet your favorite creators, talk to other hobbyists and learn about everything that our industry has to offer. It is so much fun. There will be another show in Daytona, Florida next month. Will I see you there? Now, here's why I am able to make this video today thanks to Aquashella. Because while there, I talked to the representative from Bulk Reef Supply and they told me that they really liked my setup. Bulk Reef Supply then gave me the opportunity to build my dream setup using equipment from Ecotech and Aqua Illumination. As you know, my tanks are pretty low tech. They don't have any filtration or a designated sump to put in any filtration equipment. I prefer the approach of low tech reefing and just letting nature do its thing. Even before talking to Bill Grief Supply, I was already thinking about changing the equipment on my aquariums to make things even easier. I want to control all my things with as little apps as possible. Before I made this switch, I was using equipment from brands as Sietje, Yabao, Red Sea, Castle, Reef Kinetics and Tunze. Every one of these brands had an own app, so I had 6 apps installed on my phone to control my aquariums. Now I just need one app to control the lighting, dosing and flow of all my tanks. The app is called Mobius. I have already upgraded my lighting and flow, as you can see here in the app. And soon I'll be replacing my Yabao dosing pumps for Ecotech Versas. That is a massive upgrade, if you know what I mean. This was quite a big project. I've also been traveling a lot lately to film more content for you all. Your support really helps keep this all going. I recently set up a Patreon page so you can follow me on there for free or become a member by pledging a small amount of money each month. You occasionally get behind the scenes footage and extra updates on there. Please go check it out by clicking the link in the comments. I also want to thank these 7 members I have on there right now. I really appreciate it. Alrighty, now you know what I've been up to lately and I can't wait to release it all to you. For now let's take a close look at my aquariums. On the biggest tank, the 40 gallon shallow reef, I am using a kit with two Radian XR15 G6 Pro LEDs. I put them on a hanging kit because I think that looks so much cleaner as opposed to using the arm mounts. This has a more minimalistic look I guess. I also have the opportunity to add two aqua illumination blades to this fixture, in case I need more lighting to grow some cool SPS colonies or something. But that's something for the future. I currently have all my LEDs on a default program which I run at 40% intensity to watch how the corals react to these lights. Of course I'll make adjustments to the schedule accordingly. These lights have been running for about a month now and I'm pretty happy with the results so far. The corals seem to be growing faster and I noticed the coloration improved a little bit. For flow I went with an Ecotech MP10 and Aqua Illumination Nero 3. These power heads have a very sleek design to them. Look how tiny this Nero 3 is. The MP10 is pretty cool as well. There are no electrical parts inside the aquarium. You have a wet side which is basically just the propeller that you put against the glass on the inside and on the outside you put the actual motor that powers the wet side. I think it works through a magnetic mechanism inside. That's pretty cool. This too is a much better looking design as opposed to the bulky seat chip power heads I had in here before. On top of that, they are super quiet. As you may know, this is my bedroom and all the equipment needs to be extra quiet. Now for the animals inside, a quick update. A few weeks ago I posted a video on here about the holy grail coral I bought and the two clams. The clams are looking healthy and happy. They retract as soon as I hover my hand over the water which is a good sign. I can't wait to see these clams grow over time. The filter feeding Christmas tree worms next to the clams, that some people told me were impossible to keep in my tank and they would die within weeks, are still doing amazing after 2 years. Because of this I have faith in the health of these clams. I think they are in a great position in the tank. 
They are also in a direct line below the LED so they have plenty of light to photosynthesize. The high-end chalice coral, my holy grail coral, is also looking good. I am noticing a little bit of growth on it which is pretty exciting. I can't wait to see this grow over the next few months. I really like the look of these new LEDs and I'm so happy I made the change. It's not too bright and the corals look amazing underneath them. And finally my Acropora species are growing a little bit. Is it the lights? Is it something else? I don't know. The funny thing about this piece of Hitnopora is that I got it from my local fish store on accident. It was a very small fragment, roughly the size of about 5mm or so, and I decided to glue it onto a small piece of rock. First it started covering the entire rock, so it had a strong base. Then it slowly started growing in height and now it's getting even some small branches. It's getting a bit irritated at the base, I think it's because of the mushroom curls surrounding it, so we need to keep an eye on that. But other than that, it still looks happy. The fungia is still spitting out babies it seems. I have sold quite a few of them to local hobbyists over the past few weeks, but there are still many left. So if you know me and you are local and want one, send me a message. Next to this colony I have these two beautiful mushroom corals. I really like them, but I have no idea what their hype name is. But in the end that doesn't really matter as long as you just like the coral. I was talking to someone on Instagram called Inland Reef about the mangroves I kept in my frag thing, which we'll check out next. He told me that in order to grow a strong root base the mangroves need a lot of flow. So because of this I decided to move them into my 40 gallon reef tank and put them right in front of this powerful power head. I'll keep you all posted on the growth. I really hope I can grow a small bush over the next few years, I know they are very slow growers. In a few weeks I'll be in Florida to film some content and attend Aquashella. When I get back I'll look into some new fish, inverts and corals for this aquarium. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. Next up the frag tank. Similar setup in terms of equipment. One XR15 G6 Pro LED on a mounting arm and a Nero 3 for flow. Eventually I plan on turning this into an SPS only tank. I think that will look really cool and be a great challenge. And I know I've been saying that for a while now but trust me, it's happening soon. Right now I have a beautiful chalice in here nicknamed Space Invaders, some Calastrea frags, an elegance coral and a few other species of coral that require some, well, TLC. Last week I picked up a small piece of chalice from a local hobbyist. He was having trouble with it as the tissue was receding a little bit. He asked me to attempt to save it, so that's what I'm doing now. I really hope it gets better. Something else I need to work on are these cables. I need to replace them with some black cords so they blend in against the black wall. Alrighty, now let's check out the soft coral tank. As I told you last time, I am growing out some pests so I can make some educational content on how to get rid of them using different methods. But that requires a little bit more time so I hope to bring it to you later this year. These are some of the easiest corals you can keep in an aquarium. They are very hardy so they aren't really too bothered about these pests. This tank has the exact same equipment as the frag tank, giving it a uniform look next to the other tanks. I run the exact same lighting schedule on this tank as well. Ideally I'd make three separate lighting schedules, one for soft corals who like a little bit less light, one for the mixed reef tank in the middle and then one for the much demanding soon to be SPS coral tank. The clownfish in this tank are well over 10 years old, I believe when I bought them about 2 years ago they were 12 years old, but I'm not too sure anymore. But they are somewhere in the range of 10 to 15 years. The macroalgae in this tank are growing really fast too. I am super happy with the way my fish room is turning out. We're working on a new setup that I will reveal to you later this month and the 1 liter mini reef is also looking good. The corals are looking great and I'm now just doing one 50% water change every week instead of doing one every few days. Let me know your thoughts and suggestions on any of my reef tank setups in the comments and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.